Now we are going to learn today about bone healing process. The bone healing depends upon the type of bone in which the fracture has occurred and the amount of movement which is occurring after the fracture till the fracture is healed. Two types of healing are seen in the bone. Primary bone healing is where there is no callus formation and it occurs when there is absolute stability at the fracture site and there is compression at the fracture site. That means there is no movement at the fracture site which results in this type of healing and there is secondary bony healing in which abundant callus formation is seen and it occurs in sites where the fracture has only relative stability that is there is some amount of movement but the fracture has been fixed rigidly but there is some amount of movement left which stimulates this type of healing. If there will be excessive motion at the fracture site then the fracture will not unite and it will cause a non-union. So we will discuss the primary bone healing. What are the three prerequisites? The bone ends should be in close contact. There should be compression at the fracture site and there should be no motion at the fracture site. In this diagram you can see that there is no gap and complete contact at the fracture site and there is compression at the fracture site and absolutely no movement which will stimulate primary healing and you can see that it heals without formation of any callus. Now we will discuss the secondary bone healing in detail. It only occurs when there is some micro motion present at the fracture site and the secondary bone healing occurs through five stages. So what are all the five stages? The five stages are first hematoma formation, second is the stage of inflammation, third stage is soft callus formation, fourth is hard callus formation and fifth and the last is remodeling. What is the timeline? Hematoma formation occurs within 24 hours. Inflammation stays up to 1 to 7 days. Soft callus formation at 3 weeks. Hard callus at 3 months. And remodeling occurs at 1 to 3 years. So in stage 1 you can see that there is hematoma formation. There is gap at the fracture site and it occurs due to bleeding of, of the fractures ends. In stage 2, these inflammatory cells which are WBCs and macrophages come at the fracture site and they release cytokines which stimulate the repair process. You will see that some bone necrosis of the ends of the bone occurs at this stage. Stage 3 is stage of soft callus formation which occurs at 3 weeks. And the WBCs and macrophages are replaced by osteoblasts which lay down woven bone. At this stage there is some stability at the fracture site and this stability is provided only for the maintenance of the length of the bone but still angulation can occur so we should further protect the fracture even if the soft callus has formed. At 3 months the soft callus solidifies and forms hard callus around the fracture. There is extensive bridging of woven bone which is strong enough to support the weight of the limb. But the bone has not regained its normal structure at this time. Remodeling takes place from 1 to 3 years in which lamellar bone is laid down and the woven bone is replaced and you can see that the lost canal is also being formed and the bone is regaining its shape in this phase. 